video. I feel pretty fucking good. Uh, what's going on guys, it's Blade. In this video, I'm doing a top, well, I mean day two deck profile. You, all, you can already tell I don't do deck profiles that much. I, uh, this is a day two deck profile of, uh, well, Ryan, I know, I know who you are, but introduce yourself to the audience. Ah, well, uh, before this uh, most recent set, I used to be a Trickstar player, as evidenced by the mat. But uh, ever since uh, Thunder Dragons came out, you know, you, you gotta, gotta play the best. So, Ooh. for this deck profile, uh, I made day two. Um, wouldn't have made top cut, but, um, you know, it went X2-1 in the uh, main event for day one. And yeah, so onto the cards. All so right. playing Triple Ash Blossom because you know it's Ash. Like straight up, this card would do some games. Um, then MVP of pretty much every game against Sky Striker, the one Danko. Okay. Is, um, so he's, yeah. a lot of people are cutting this and just putting it in the side. Yeah. How come you decided to main deck one? I feel like it's necessary for game one when your opponent doesn't really know like what you're playing against. If you go first as a as a Thunder Dragon player and uh, striker out your board, you want to fusion search this on your next turn, normal summon it, and then you OTK because your opponent can't uh, widow anchor you or do anything. You just win. So I felt like this was just a win condition against striker. So um, besides that, um, three battery man solar. Your uh, starter card for the deck. Yep. Um, your only really good num normal summon. This deck plays a few normal summons like Danko, but you want to see Solar in every starting hand, so you play three of them. And then on to the Thunder Dragons. The other normal summon of the deck, uh, Matrix. He's super good, recurs himself, he's a quick effect. Um, allows me to pop on my opponent's turn if I have Titan. Super strong. Um, then the, uh, the Looper. You uh, search for you know your two thunder dragons, put them in the grave, have one in hand, and then you uh, fusion shuffle them all back and make the titan and uh, fusion and then uh, thunder dragon to add them back one at a time, chaining titan every time to like pop you know it's close to four cards. Um, this plus Danko plus Titan was game against every back row deck I played. Right. Straight up, you just pin their back row. You'd summon Titan and then you just pop for free and they can't do anything. Then you just OTK. Um, then the worst card to have, well, one of the worst to have in your hands, uh, Dragon Dark. He's necessary because he's such a good combo extender. You usually summon him off um, the other guy, which is Dark. Um, so that you banish Dark off of any of your starter cards to bring out this guy and he searches for whatever you need, whether it's Fusion or Hawk to uh, get you started. Um, Hawk, by the way, the best card of this archetype, honestly, you know, outside of the Fusions. This guy extends you into places you honestly shouldn't get to. Um, and his, uh, his uh, banish effect is actually pretty good where you um, mulligan your hand for free, basically. So if you open um, Gold Sark or and a card you don't want in your hand, you just gold start this, shuffle back what you don't need, draw a new hand, and go off. Has that ever come up for you today? Yeah, I actually used it um, two times. Once versus um, Goki, and then the other time versus, um, uh, I think it was Striker. Um, you'll see it later, but uh, Brilliant Fusion, plus, I only play one target, or one Gem Knight, because I feel like it's brick to play two. Right. So uh, if you open Brilliant Fusion plus the Gem Knight, you just Gold Sark this away, shuffle the uh, Gem Knight back in the deck, and your Brilliant's live, and you can go off. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of decks aren't, a lot of Thunder Dragon decks aren't playing this card, but I think this card's insane. Um, Thunder oh, yeah. Dragon Duo. Right. Um, because he's a searchable chaos monster. Pretty much all the other chaos monsters uh, aren't searchable. You have to hard draw them. Right. But this guy's searchable and he's a free body. So the problem I have with this deck was that you can only summon a certain number of times. But right. um, with Dragon Duo, it gives you that extra push um, because oh. this guy can be tributed uh, to make an extra Titan if you need it. Um, and once he's properly summoned on the next turn, uh, Dragon Hawk can bring him back for free. Right. Um, and if he ever survives to your opponent's end phase, like putting uh, a lure of darkness back on the top of your deck is pretty fucking good. I mean, right. pretty pretty insane. Um, then the brick of the deck, Gem Knight, Amber. Uh, so I know a lot of people play two of this. How come you decided to play one? 
Um, I figured that I'm playing so many normal summons in this deck, uh, like three of the Solar, three of the Matrix, one Danko, that if you're normal summoning this guy and making one Colossus, you're probably going to lose the game. Um, I, I, I don't know, I, I like um, the fact that you can shuffle this guy back if you do see him, so like, I didn't ever feel the need to have more than one. Did the second one ever come up or no? No. I mean, technically the, the games where I had uh, this plus Brilliant Fusion, Brilliant Fusion would still be live, but I like shuffling this back and getting a new hand. Right. So on for the Spice. Not not too many decks are playing this, but um, the Wavern Buster and um, uh, Caller Serpent combo. Uh -huh. So there's they're, uh, Chaos Monsters, Banishes a Light to Special, Banishes a Dark to Special. Can't be Normal Summon, which kind of sucks, but um, they let you trigger your um, your darks and roars in grave and right. uh, plus because a lot of a lot of the cards in your deck uh, like um, solar dump uh, thunder monster on summon and um, if you open like solar plus uh, white dragon wyvern burster you could just go fucking off because uh, uh, wyvern burster lets you banish whatever dark you send. Right. Would you consider? So this one banishes lights, and this one banishes darks. Right. Would it, would you consider playing two of this since this um, yeah. banishes darks? I would actually consider playing two of this in the future, but I was already at um, like at the end. I guess I'm already playing 45 cards. I didn't um, really want to push it to 46. I felt like 45 was good enough. And right. in testing, um, since these guys search each other when they're sent uh -huh. from field to grave. Um, if you open one, you open the other. You just have right. to link it away. Um, and it's free link fodder and lets you deck thin too. Uh, the only problem is you can't summon them more than once per turn. So if you go right. black, then white, and then black, you can't uh, summon the second black that turn. Right. Um, but like, I just felt like these guys were a consistency see boost that the deck needed. Uh, would you consider cutting one of these for the second one of these? No, because the reason why I played two darks, you know, why, why would you want to banish lights? Uh, allure. I play allure darkness, and uh, most of the archetype is light. Um, and uh, you really, you really, sometimes you really struggle to find a dark in hand. And I felt yeah. like this guy, if I was going to play chaos, um, filled that role in the deck. Interesting. Um, and then honestly, the game closer of the deck, like straight up, you saw this in your opening hand, you probably won. BLS, if you saw this card in hand, you probably won the game. I mean, right. BLS does everything you'd want in a card. Um, 3k beat stick, can attack twice, lots of damage, or, you know, uh, in out to your opponent's problematic monsters. Right. Um, I used this on uh, enemy Colossus too many times today, and uh, it's pretty insane. Um, but that's all for the monsters. Move them to the side. Okay. Would you so, consider Levian here the chaos, the other new chaos dragon? Um, I did consider Levian here in testing, but I found that Levian here required too many resources to summon most of the time. Okay. Um, banishing. By the time you had three monsters in grave to banish, you usually had already used all of your effects. And while uh, Levian here is a 3k beat body and kind of blows out the uh, Altergeist matchup, I didn't feel like it was necessary with uh, what I was already working with. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, on to the, the MVPs of this deck, because, uh, you know, this yeah, deck I... is like 30 monsters and a shit ton of spells because... And your deck's like full of power spells. Yeah, power spells, that's what these are. So Brilliant Fusion lets you get a... Thunder mo uh, fusion monster on board and whatever uh, thunder monster you want in grave. This is honestly the best card in the deck. It's like a battery man solar, but it's, like you put a fusion. Yeah. And it's not your own. Exactly. Um, I mean, this this card. Whenever I saw it, it usually won me the game because if you open this and they don't ash it, you combo so fucking hard and your opponent goes, "What the fuck did you just do?" Right. 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 So this card is really strong. Um, then the other card that I consider a power card in this deck, Allure of Darkness. Uh -huh. um, Allure just gets you places because um, most dark decks will run this to cycle because it's a, technically it's a neutral card, doesn't plus you. But in Thunder Dragons, if you open Dark or um, Dark or Roar and you have Allure, you go plus one off that and you get two new cards in your hand, which is insane. Um, 
being able to trigger roar and dark to start your combos is pretty insane and then getting two more cards that could be potentially hand traps or stuff for your opponent's next turn or right. combo extenders like this card is a must of it's why i was playing the two um uh, black dragons because um you only run six uh of right. the thunder dragons who are dark but um you kind of need more especially since you're running like three bls and like the, all the lights in the deck um so I ran the extra two Chaos Darks just to right. make sure I always had a target for a lore. Gotcha. And then the uh, the other good card in this deck, Instant Fusion. Yep. Instant Fusion was just kind of a whatever you needed at the moment kind of card. Right. Um, Instant Fusion lets you get either Kaminari Attack, so either gets you a Thunder Fusion monster, or it lets you get uh, Thousand Eyes to slurp up your opponent's monsters. Right. Um, I found this card to be insanely good anytime I saw it, going first or second. Most people consider Instant Fusion kind of bad going first, unless you're playing Goki and you just summon out that warrior guy. Um, but Instant Fusion going first or second is super good for this deck, because it lets you banish Thunder Dragons out that are normally dead out of your hand. Just thinking about it, how is your Goki matchup? Like, is it isn't there a way for your deck to potentially like out the extra link? Um, I always figured that um, if I play Goki um, and they manage to extra link me through whatever I have, usually Ash or Imperm, um, <laughs> then you know might as well go to game two because right. I don't really. You can't really out the extra link unless you open BLS in a way yeah. to get two engrave. Um, right. So I figured, you know, it's better to run just the Ash and not overload your deck with hand traps and ruin your consistency. Right. Um, and rather just focus on winning games where you get first or your opponent opens subpar and then taking those games and then beating them once you've side them. So the best card in the deck, Gold Sark, self-explanatory. Banishes one card from your deck, starts all your plays. If you don't see anything else but Gold Sark, you still get at least one Colossus. Right. Um, so any four brick cards, Gold Sark, you still go in places. Um, I think this is the correct spell trap lineup for this deck because um, it maximizes on ways to get bricks out of your hand. Uh, you can banish opening any of these cards, you can get to your combo. Um, if you open Gold Sark, you know, you can banish whatever you need to start. If you open Instant Fusion and a Thunder Monster like Dark or Roar, who are normally dead in hand, you can banish them out of your hand to start your combo and you get the free monster on board. Or, you know, it's removal at the, for Instant Fusion's case. Um, right. So I felt like these cards were insanely strong. Anytime I opened a hand with two spells and monsters, I won. So, definitely wouldn't change this lineup. For the not power spells, Thunder Dragon Fusion. I know this card is insane. It's super strong. Being able to shuffle back resources gives you such good grind game. It's insane. Um, but I didn't play more than one because it's searchable and I didn't want to see it in my hand. I think it's a brick um, because unless you're playing versus Goki and they drop your entire hand, um, it's not a very good card. Um, it lets you get to a Titan, sure, but it doesn't do anything after that. You have to have something plus this card uh, to go off. And if you open two of these, you can't do anything with the second one. You can set it and hope they pop it, and then have two searches, technically. But um, I don't. I think that's pretty janky. So I run one because it's it's searchable. And Imperm. I was only running two because uh, only have two. Right. Um, but uh, if I was, if I had three, we'd probably have run the third. So you'd make um, it 46 cards. In that I would have made it 46 cards. Okay. Um, this card's too good, I think, uh, to not run it. It's good first or second, and uh, if your opponent's not paying attention to zones, you can blow them out. So right, that's the main cool. deck. 40, uh, 45 cards. Uh, side or extra? Uh, so I guess uh, we can do extra first. Okay. Um, Got our tokens first. All the Trickstar Bays. Oh, oh Trickstar man. player. Seven. Alright, so, you know, your boss monster, Colossus, says your opponent can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, yeah. Striker, Goki, Trickstar, 
any combination of those three, they all fucking hate this card. Um, you honestly, if you summon one, like you could brick and summon one Colossus on on Striker, and if they don't open an Infirm or a Widow Anchor, you probably won the game, just because. I mean, this card's fucking insane. But being able, uh, the other thing is, um, you have some pretty cool plays you can do with this card. Um, Especially if your opponent has a board, so you're going second. Um, if you have this card still on your on your board, you can um, you can use it to um, banish shit out of your grave by just crashing into your opponent's monsters. A lot of my opponents didn't see that coming. They were like, "Why the fuck would you take damage?" Um, but you can proc the effects, the protection effect, and go off from there in main phase two. Um, so this card's pretty good, especially since uh, it's all in damage step. So if you banish Boar off of uh, Colossus protecting itself, they can't Ash because it's in damage step. So right. this card is insane. $80, probably worth it. Um, Titan, only played two. Um, I feel like two is enough. Probably, I don't think I ever really needed the third. Um, I know in uh, Europe they play three because they don't have Summon Sork and um, Summoning two Titan to the board is pretty good in certain certain circumstances. Um, I never I never summoned double Titan. I was always with uh, double Colossus and Titan. I think is the superior board because um, if they open one way to out your Colossus, they have to open the second and then summon monsters, and you usually have a way to proc Titan. Titan's insane because he can uh, pop during the damage step and not once per turn, and doesn't target, and right. he's just all around big, like 3200 gets over most things. Um, if they book it, they have to deal with 32 booty too, so... Um, and uh, the Banish 2 out of your grave is pretty insane, because um, one play that I like to do is uh, banish um, power spells out of the grave, so like uh, Allure or uh, Instant Fusion. And um, if I have uh, Dragon Duo, Dragon Duo during the opponent's end phase will allow me to put the, one of those cards on either the top or the bottom of my deck. So. Uh, basically lets you get free extra pluses off, you know, whatever you decide to do. Um, and reuse spells, which is kind of insane. So this card's pretty insane. Best combo with this is, um, like I said, Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon, Fusion, Shuffle them back, Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon for two free pops. Right. Um, not much more to say. This card wins you games, nice. especially versus uh, back row. Um, then I'm running Prismira. Uh, doesn't do anything because I don't run the second Gem Knight. Um, everybody always asking me what this card does. I told them it was a vanilla because basically I don't run any of the uh, things that make this card do things. But technically, if you have another Gem Knight, you can discard it to pop a face up, um, which is pretty good. But I didn't like it, so just one for uh, brilliant. Then uh, we got our instant fusion targets. Right. Kaminari and Thousand Eyes. Thousand Eyes pretty much, if you go second, you summon this guy. If you go first, you summon this guy. Um, Thousand Eyes comes up a lot because you can slurp up your opponent's uh, Kagari or Shizuku or whatever Sky, Sky Striker monster they have, and it doesn't trigger Ray, so it's an easy way to out the uh, Sky Striker's best line of defense sometimes. Right. Um, so I felt like this card was definitely worth running. Um, you can also do some weird stuff with taking other opponent's cards. But, um, and then Kaminari attack, um, pretty self-explanatory, just a thunder fusion, lets you uh, banish out of your hand. Also, this card was really good, because uh, it's out, it's an out to uh, enemy Colossus. Right. It came up sometimes. For sure. Uh, onto the links, I played a pretty small link package, because I was playing so many fusions. Uh, the one Link Rebo, because, um, well, it's Link Rebo, you're running level one, so gotta play this card. Right. Um, then you play the double summon some summoner. Uh, I love its name. I say it to my opponents all the time. I think it's funny. Um, summon some. I summon, never summon. have resolved its effect because it does not ever live to my opponent's turn. Right. Um, because it's a thunder monster and it's not a fusion, I contribute this for Colossus. Right. And I always do it because Colossus is so much better than this. True. Like straight up double Colossus versus this Colossus. And potentially me getting another monster my other on my next turn, like no thanks. Right. So definitely a two of though. Came up a lot of times that I needed to. Uh, did you ever want a third? No. Um, technically, it's shuffleable black by a fusion. If you uh, have the regular Thunder Dragon in feet on engrave. Right. Um, 
but I, I never did that. Two is two is enough. Honestly, you could probably play with just one, but you'll 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 want it. And you'll want the second at, at times. Um, unicorn spin stuff back. Turns out non-targeting, non-destruction removal. Well, targeting, but non-destruction removal is pretty fucking good. Uh, so definitely a must of in any meta deck right now. Right. Outs anything. Um, and then the controversial cards. I was uh, convinced to play these. Um, oh. I I like the summon sort combos, but. Um, Honestly, every time I made Summon Sword contesting, I felt like I was overextending. Um, so I actually never summoned either of these two monsters today, and I feel like it was the correct decision not to, because um, a lot of the times, if your opponent has stuff and you're going off, uh, one opponent, you know, told a uh, Goki player told me, like, he was just waiting for me to go into Summon Sword to Ash it, but I never did. So... Wow. Like, I feel like if you go into this card, like, you're going to have a lot more losses because um, you make the, f you know, the extra monster off whatever f uh, thunder you have, and then you need a Link 4 to go into, so that's why I was playing Bomber Dragon. Right. Um, you link the extra into this, and you have space for, like, extra Titans. Um, problem is you have to waste a lot of material once you summon one of them because you have to protect all of them um, because of Bomber's effect. Never made either of these two cards. Um, the last card in my extra deck came up way more than either of these two. I honestly would cut this card, because it's probably gonna get banned soon. Um, didn't like it. Same with this card, never used it. And in theory it's good, but like, the next card in my extra deck is so much better. And obviously the last card in my deck, Boral Sword Dragon. Okay. Basically BLS on legs, except, you know, better because Konami likes to power creep things. Um, summoning this plus any fusion or dwar or anything with 2k attack is game on an empty field. Um, this card's insane. Like, you make, with the with the Chaos Monsters, you get so much, like, link material, it's, it's so easy to make this guy. And right. honestly, like, this card, if you summon it and they have no response, it's game. So, have to play this card. If you're not playing it, you're, you, you're doing it wrong. Unless you're playing, you know, fucking Goki, who it's like, I don't enter the battle phase, I just win before you get there. So, right. But if you play battle phase decks, gotta play it. Or you're playing Frank. <laughs> yeah. For uh, the extra deck, I would definitely change a shit ton. I'd drop the uh, Top Logic Bomber and, uh -huh. um, Summon, and Summon Sword, and I'd run um, Phoenix, which I actually wasn't playing because I felt like you never used it, and uh, Underclock Taker. Because uh, Underclock into Boral Sword is an insane combo that can just fucking win you the game out of nowhere. Because your opponent's like, I have a big beat stick, you can't, o you can't get over it. And then you make it zero and then Boral Sword it. And then they're like, okay, I guess I lose now. So, um, other than that though, uh, Extra Deck performed pretty well to me. Great. Uh, so did the, sorry, I should have asked this earlier, but did Summon Sorcerers come up at all? No, I actually never summoned it. Um, in any of my, let's see, I played nine rounds of Swiss and never summoned it in probably 25 games. So, um, I don't know, I just didn't like it. Anytime you could right. make Summon Sword, you can make Triple Colossus and a Titan pretty much. Right. So, and I felt like I had enough starter cards that you never needed the, um, the extra uh, tutor from deck, so it's whatever. I didn't like it. Other people probably like it, but I didn't. Right. So, uh, side deck, not super spicy. Um, I felt like you had to play Hand Trap Sweet because I wasn't playing them in the main. Um, double Bell. Uh, shout out to my teammate, uh, Jesus, for letting me borrow these. I actually sold mine because, um, well, they're expensive as fuck and I need money to eat. Uh, <laughs> Then you got the uh, the classic Droll. Droll wins you games against the FTK, which is running rampant right now. I was kind of scared of seeing it, but I figured um, it's probably better to just side hand traps and accept game one loss if you play it. Right. Um, I also found that when playing versus FTK, the at least the uh, danger version of it, um, your opponent like messes up all the time. Like no one knows how to play that fucking deck. Like. If you drop the wrong uh, danger card, you know, they end their turn sometimes, and 
I felt like it wasn't like it's super consistent because you draw half your deck but like if you get lucky with uh, your danger effects activating and resolving then you know you're probably gonna win um, which is why hand traps in the side droll though against that deck wins the game pretty hard uh -huh. Even though they played in a, um, as a thought and all that shit, um, preventing monster activations, to get to as a thought, they usually have to activate a danger, and you drool them after, and they cry. Would um, you have considered um, playing like Reaper? So like, would you have considered cutting the summon sword on uh, Topologic, and then like adding a firewall and something else? Yeah, I was actually Reaper? considering playing Reaper um, and adding like firewall and maybe Dante because one of this uh -huh. deck's worst matchups is uh, VA. Right. Um, but in the end, I decided that um, it just wasn't wasn't really worth it. Um, I felt like if you see Droll, it's the same thing as seeing Reaper. And Reaper, you don't have to have extra deck space for. So if I'm, I, I kind of felt like I would play a lot more Rogue at this event than I did. Um, and so I felt like Droll hurts Rogue more than Reaper because you can't Reaper right. something you don't have an extra deck target for. Right. Um, but yeah, hand traps for the event. I think they worked out pretty well. Every time I saw Droll versus a combo deck, it won me the game. Nice. No one, no one opened uh, Call by the Grave against me, so I guess I got pretty lucky. Um, onto the back row hate. This deck's worst matchup is Altergeist, so you have to run Twin Twisters at the very least. I wanted to run this in the main, um, but I honestly couldn't find space. Uh, I thought Imperm was better than Twin Twisters. Um, so, but you gotta run this card right now with Altergeist if you're gonna play Thunder Dragons. Right. Um, to that end, you also have to play uh, this card. I feel like this deck OTKs so easily with the amount of extenders and combos you can do with two cards. So if you red reboot going second into Altergeist, you can just win off of that because you flip that card face down, they don't summon their uh, their multi-faker, and you go off and you win because they have an open board and they can't respond. So right. this card's insane. Um, uh, I actually never played a Altergeist matchup today um, and therefore never sided in. Actually, I take that back. I played two Draco, sided in Red Reboot, rebooted in evenly, and it saved me the game. Uh, got me a 2 0 over Draco. So. This card's good uh, against back row, and I guess Draco, Altergeist, Paleo. I'm sure I'm missing one, but you know, you gotta play this card, gotta play this card. Pretty mandatory. Whether you wanna play two or three, up to you, but you gotta play them. Right. Um, and general going second stuff, evenly matched. A lot of people are experimenting with outs to Thunder Dragons, you know, people saying Mind Control, Medion. Um, Book of Eclipse. I feel like evenly is the most consistent way to out the Thunder Dragon board. If you can evenly, um, and I have to banish two Colossus and keep one, like I'm probably going to lose that game because I can't get my face down banish back unless I resolve duo effects, which is pretty hard. Um, evenly, like it wins you striker matchups, it wins you paleo matchups, it wins you altergeist matchups, it wins you uh, extra link matchups. Like, this card is so good going second. And yeah, you, call, you lose your battle phase for turn two, but at the cost of um, your opponent's board, I think this is, this is worth running. Um, I actually found that a lot of times um, when uh, I lose dice roll or um, I get to choose where to go, if uh, I side in evenly and make my opponent go first when I theoretically could have gone first, um, is actually much stronger than going first and setting up a board because they know that they have to break Thunder Dragon board So they're gonna side all their shit um, But if you make them go first and they're caught with a hand of Medion and Book of Eclipse and all that shit And then you go second and just kill them with BLS and your big monsters uh, Or just evenly their back row um, I feel like this card's too good right now and the spice of this deck won me a couple games. Saravaris, the Ancient and Ascended. Okay. This card, um, probably a lot of people don't actually know what this guy does, but when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets on the field, uh, actually, that targets in general, 
Um, it doesn't have to be on the field, uh, but it has to be your monster. Then um, you can discard this guy from your hand to negate that activation. Um, I found that when I go first versus striker in a sided match, um, they almost definitely have three imperm, three uh, widow anchor, and usually three mind control too, um, all of which target. And I need to find a way to make sure that my Colossus stays on board um, so that I can continue exerting pressure on them to the point where I just win. Um, because Colossus staying on the board means Striker can't do anything for the most part. And Saravaris turns one Colossus into two because if they Imperm, you Saravaris, and it's negated. They Widow Anchor, you Saravaris, negated. Um, and it's a hand trap, so um, most of the time uh, they don't see it coming. Very few people have said that they expected this out of Thunder Dragon, so I think this card's pretty good. Um, in the future, when people know about it, maybe not as great, but um, in the future, the card, I, the card I was actually thinking of taking this out for was Forbidden Lance, because uh, technically if you Lance your Thunder Dragon on uh, Colossus in standby phase, You've got that. Uh, you've got that guy for the entire turn, especially if you summon it in defense, which is what I what I try to do usually. Right. Um, other than that, that's the entire deck. Uh, 15 in the side, 15 in the extra, 45 in the main. All right, Ryan. Before we head off, any shout-outs you want to make? Yeah, I have uh, my boy Ryan over here. Uh, played the same deck as me. Didn't do as hot, but you know. Everybody gets unlucky sometimes. Yeah, because you're bad, no. <laughs> um, uh, my boy Jesus, he's uh, actually playing in a regional flight right now. Hey. He actually bought me pretty much half this deck at the very least. Um, so kudos to him, otherwise I'd still be playing Trick Stars and Oozing. Um, Shout out to my boy Blade Yu-Gi-Oh for uh, hosting this video. All it's right. pretty chill. Um, thanks, man. And uh, all the rest of my team, Team Endgame, uh, thanks for playtesting with me and getting me to this list, even though everybody in my fucking team was like, Ryan, cut everything in your deck, 40 cards max, get the fuck out of here. You know what? I did the best out of everybody, so... Pog champ. I feel pretty good. good. That's all for all me, right. man. All right, Ryan. Thank you so much for the deck profile and hope to see you soon.